Hello, thanks for joining today. We are going to be discussing how to facilitate telemedicine encounters. My name is Zach Winkleman. I'm an athletic trainer um, licensed in the state of Indiana and certified nationally. Before we begin, I think it's important that we talk about this idea of how or why we're doing telemedicine encounters. And when you approach a telemedicine encounter, it's important to think about how you deconstruct what you typically do with what a patient um, a patient encounter while being open-minded to bold advancements, so completely changing your way of thought, your approach, and how you're communicating with that patient to redesign the care with clear goals throughout the entire encounter so that, that both the patient and provider have clear expectations from what uh, each individual is expected to do. With this mindset, telemedicine encounters will make sense and in athletic training, clinical practice, and throughout healthcare. If we are apprehensive to the ease of use, its usefulness, um, and when I say it's, it's telemedicine. So if we're apprehensive to the way that telemedicine will be able to be used or how useful it will be for our care, then we'll be uh, slow adopters to integrating telemedicine within our clinical practice and athletic training. If we understand those, um, the ease of use of using telemedicine and the usefulness of doing it, then what we have is our behavioral intentions or comes a social norm. So what that means is once people understand what it can do for us, we will begin to adopt it. And by doing that, we will have the intentions of using it with patients while that also becoming the social norm. So people will see each other doing it and that becomes what we all typically would do. And that's something that's typical of healthcare and clinical practice for all professions. To give you some specifics on uh, how to facilitate an encounter, uh, preparing for the encounter is the most uh, important part. So this is your normal stuff. This is the uh, idea that I have a scheduled patient coming in today and this is what I need to do. With athletic training and the skills um, that we have been trained to do, we also understand the emergency and immediate care response. With that also comes the idea of that primary survey or that I have not met you before, I may have not interacted with you before, and I need to be able to understand where you're at as a patient, your previous medical history, and then still preparing for an encounter that um, allows you to do a full clinical exam. So despite your, your knowledge or skills with a, a specific patient, you still should be able to apply this throughout the realm. So this is your normal stuff though. So arriving on time to your encounter, um, dress professionally, whatever that may look like um, for your clinic. So if that is a uh, suit and tie, scrubs, a polo, um, something of that sort. So just so that the person on the camera understands uh, that they are working with a medical professional. Uh, that you come prepared for the encounter. Um, some of the research in telemedicine tells us that preparing for telemedicine encounters actually requires a little bit more uh, forefront work. And what that means is uh, when you have a specific patient that you know you'll be facilitating a telemedicine encounter for, it's important to understand what their, their medical history is. It's also important that if you're collaborating with someone, say a physician as an athletic trainer, and you're going to be uh, with the, the patient next to you and collaborating with a physician at a distance, it's important to take those measurements beforehand. So going through your typical assessment of manual muscle testing, range of motion, um, swelling assessments, and having that data to be able to provide to that physician as they go through the telemedicine counter. If you're meeting one-on-one -on -one with a patient, say you're the athletic trainer meeting a patient through telemedicine for an evaluation, some of this may be a little bit difficult. It's important to get as much information as you can through uh, communication prior to the face-to-face -face, uh, video encounter. It's also important to be in a quiet space in a private room. So the, the quiet area allows for the individual to feel valued while you're there listening, that distractions are not occurring in the background and there's not a lot of loud noise. So that makes uh, it's uh, sometimes interesting to find a place that may fit that for you. Within athletic training clinics, most of them have a private office or a doctor's space, and this is what we suggest that you use um, for your telemedicine counters. In performing internet check, most of our telemedicine counters run through some type of uh, internet. We suggest that you use a hard wire, which that means an ethernet connection, and that just prevents the opportunity for the Wi-Fi to go out, which we know happens all the time um, across campuses. So before doing this, just get onto your computer and click on the uh, uh, internet icon in the bottom corner and do an internet check for your computer and your, your internet connection that you're on. If you don't have an ethernet cable to do a hard wire, just make sure that you have a, a viable uh, Wi-Fi connection that is strong. 
If you are preparing an encounter for someone that's located on the same Wi-Fi connection as you, make sure you understand that because sometimes telemedicine platforms will not be able to interact with another telemedicine platform if they're on the same Wi-Fi connection. This is because most telemedicine platforms are designed to be a remote rural distance uh, operating systems. And so once uh, when two individuals are on the same internet connection, sometimes we'll have some uh, difficulties communicating and connecting back and forth. The essence of coordinating a telemedicine counter comes through some of the, the first steps right when you start onto the telemedicine counter with the patient. To do uh, a, a high quality telemedicine counter, it's really important that you understand the skills necessary for information technology and digital literacy. And what that means is not an assessment of yourself or what you should know or what you should not know, but it's uh, kind of just growing up in the digital age. Um, Typically, college students uh, around this age that have grown up since born since the 1990s or so, um, the ones integrating into college right now, the ones that were born in 2000 and on, uh, these individuals have grown up as technology has emerged. And it's important to understand that as the people that will be integrating telemedicine in the future. If you're an older clinician working with telemedicine, it's important to understand that your gaps are where you may or may not uh, have that. And I'm not trying to say older as a as a derogatory term, it's understanding where you're at in your technology uh, literacy. So understanding what uh, three lines, so up on a, on a home page of an internet connection, there's the three bars. And that typically is your landing platform or your home platform. Some individuals may not understand what icons actually mean and understanding what they can do. So if you have a video with an arrow on it, uh, a younger individual may understand that as switch camera due to the iPhone FaceTime feature or um, some of the other like Skype and uh, Snapchat where you can switch the camera around while other individuals may not understand that. So being able to give clear understanding and expectations of what the buttons and the features do. It's also important to assess the room. So if you're engaging with a patient um, and I am the provider and I'm there as you turn on your video, it's important to understand what's in that room with them. Are there going to be obstacles that may make it unsafe for them to do uh, some of the maneuvers or functional testing that you would like them to do? Do they have any uh, uh, skills or uh, tools available in the room, such as a goniometer, reflex hammer, uh, anything available to you so that can uh, facilitate your encounter? It's also important to see if there's a telepresence. What a telepresence from the previous articles discussed is uh, an individual that's there to help facilitate the encounter with you. As an athletic trainer, this is a great opportunity to integrate telemedicine in as the uh, telefacilitator with the patient, integrating that in with a consultation with a physician. If you're the athletic trainer, though, doing an encounter directly with the patient, it's typically a little bit more difficult to do that. One way to integrate a telepresence with a patient is to have another teammate, a coach or someone at that distance, a family member um, also present with the, the patient that they uh, prove to be there. So you can actually have them test some of the features on the patient or have them uh, ensure the safety of the patient throughout the telemedicine encounter. It's also important to adjust your camera. On some of the apps you're able to move uh, digitally uh, through using arrows. Sometimes you'll just simply need to move your camera. And that's to make sure that you have a eye contact uh, throughout the telemedicine encounter. It's really hard to do eye contact through telemedicine. Most of the time you want to sit up and stare at the screen, but my video camera is a little bit higher, so I need to make eye contact with the camera rather than with the screen. And by doing so, you're creating a connection with that individual rather than uh, looking at the screen the whole time, seeing what's down there. That is also important to look at the screen, but I'm just making sure that you understand that eye contact when the patient is speaking is vital. If, if the patient is having issues setting up their camera, it's important to understand that as well. Check the lighting in the room. Make sure that blinds are closed and that people cannot see in. If the lighting is not great, ask them to switch it to a different angle and suggest that they maybe uh, turn their body or their camera so they can get a better lighting for backlighting. Check the sound in the room um, and devices. Make sure they're plugged and charged in prior. If they're not charged, ask them to plug it in for the entire encounter so you do not drop a call in between. Establish the privacy in the room. What I typically do is say, there's no one else in the room and I will take my camera and show it around and make sure that they know that there's no one else in the room present. And this, this creates a sense of uh, uh, trust in the patient and the provider in the space that they're in. And then providing informed consent. So what, what informed consent looks like is 
um, either verbal or written. So you can have this done prior, or you can do it electronically, um, or you can just do verbal consent where you read them a statement saying like, I understand that I'm about to engage in a telemedicine encounter. These are some things that I will be doing. These are my limitations. These are the risks and benefits. Do you have any questions? If not, do you agree to participate in this encounter? And it's really quick, easy to do, but understand it allows the opportunity for the patient to ask questions before engaging. And explaining the encounter and troubleshooting plan. During the informed consent, this is a great time to do so, explaining what they'll be doing and also explaining what's uh, the troubleshooting plan, which I'll discuss later on.